Mi nombre es Rodrigo Yarzún y soy el operador del Pool Chill. Viajé más de 1.400 kilómetros para llegar a la ciudad de Buenos Aires y participar de la Jacatón de Cardano. En este evento conocí al doctor Lars Bruñez y a Robertino Martínez, quienes son miembros del equipo de educación de IOG. Su misión es educar sobre el ecosistema de Cardano y sus distintos lenguajes alrededor del mundo. En el sweet spot. They want the functionality, the way that it works. You want it to be continuously updated and improved, but you also want to be stable. So it's like you can't have both. <laughs> you can have it. So you have to like compromise one way or another. So initially it was like break everything but try new stuff. And at least one of the chairman in the Haskell Foundation like they wants to like creep it out, creep it out a little bit, like move it to the center. So like it's more stable. I think it's true. I mean, without being partisan or anything. I mean, I think it's stupid that I mean all these like Twitter wars and whatever. But I think it's just the the way Cardano approaches it because we use the scientific approach, like spacecrafts about uh, built or whatever. I mean that you start at university with with scientists and peer-reviewed papers that are checked by experts in the field, and then once you have solid theoretical foundations, you hand it over to engineering and then build something and I mean that's what we do and I think we are the only ones that do it or at least we used to be the only ones that do it like that. I mean I, I don't want to belittle I mean the brilliance of people like Sakoshi Nakamoto or um, Vitalik uh, but, but you know, so I mean they surely have brilliant ideas but I mean it's just like a white paper it's, it's like a flash of insight maybe but um, there's no guarantee that it's solid or anything and I mean we have this fundamental and conceptually solid and, and proven approach. I mean, the same way that science works to, to do it like properly with, I mean, scientists and, and take that seriously, take uh, peer review seriously and so on. But I think the main objective right now is to give this infrastructure to people that don't already have it. That's why right. we are going to Mongolia, to Ethiopia and so yeah, that's the, the idea to give all these resources, all these financial Uh, tools to people that don't have it and they adopt them they're eventually people that has the, like the access to like centralized and banks and everything may like start to adopt once they see it's a reliable system once they see that like there's thousands of people using it once they see this way cheaper than what is they are using right now in the conventional world and you have more control You also have more control. Say it again. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you have your own keys, so you have like you have control over your fans. And if you lose your keys, your fans are gone. Your fans are gone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, but I, I mean, dep it depends on the perspective. But at least from the Argentinian point of view, that right. we we have like several times. The Coralito, like exactly. You, you in 2001, you everybody lost everything. So, in for people that go through that, having control over your keys is like a huge deal. I was just joking. I just want to point out that there is always like trade-offs, of course. Yeah, there are trade-offs. You feel better if you lose your own money, no? <laughs> <laughs> well, this was me. No one has to live. <laughs> We have someone from the pool that like delegates with us, he's a programmer and works for the Argentinian banks. And the guy was telling me that, I was like, dude, I was coding when like everyone got the fuck with the money. And like I feel so, then I dece deceive, like I feel so bad about the system and like what I did to my own people. damos cuenta que el hotel del doctor Lars se encuentra al lado de la plaza donde son las manifestaciones. Un evento que le da mucho sabor a su visita y, y bueno, que conozca lo que es la sociedad argentina. Puntualmente este evento es una ocasión especial que viene a ser un hackathon, eso quiere decir que un, varios equipos de participantes van a asumir uno o una serie de desafíos que involucran la tecnología de Cardano y van a competir por esto. 
usualmente hay eventos alrededor del mundo que tienen que ver con la educación desde Haskell, que es el lenguaje de programación que se utiliza como base para poder trabajar en Plutus, que es el lenguaje exclusivo de Cardano. Y el profesor Lars, que es la persona con la que estábamos conversando, generalmente hace estas clases en Atenas, Mongolia y en otras partes del mundo con el objetivo de tener un quórum de programadores que permita a diferentes grupos de la sociedad, ya sea las empresas privadas, ya sea el sector del gobierno, forma a esta gente con razón de que tengan la experiencia y puedan utilizar este nuevo sistema operativo. Más barato, más seguro y descentralizado. Ha sido un honor poder conocer a quienes construyen y quienes componen la comunidad de Cardano en este viaje. Los invitamos a acompañarnos en nuestras siguientes aventuras.